man, I totally forgot that I was even recording my voice. I was just flying. All right, well, uh, welcome. This is my first, like, rip on the gravity. I've had a few other chill flights with it. Getting it ready, setting up everything how I like it. Got the speed bar length adjusted right now. Uh, I got the harness a little more comfortable for me. And uh, so yeah, this video is just gonna be like a gravity pair motor in flight. This is not my complete review. I don't have enough time on this motor yet to really uh, review it thoroughly. But uh, a lot of people have asked for some flight footage, so this video will give you some flight footage. I'll try to get some of the cool scenery around my local flying area. I made a post on the Paramotor Facebook group about this, but I'll mention it in the video. The first uh, thing you notice with this, this motor compared to my previous motors is like the weight shift, but I'm not pulling any brakes. This is just weight shift. I mean, I can... Uh, I had to stop it there. You can do wing overs with just weight shift on this frame. Uh, also in turbulence you get a little bit more feedback like you feel a little more not in the pitch axis but in the just in the roll axis you get a little bit more feedback from that but it's not excessive uh, I've flown some paraglider harnesses that rolled way too much it's kind of scary I didn't enjoy it this isn't that bad but it's more feedback than I would say probably the average paramotor at least from the four or five different pair motors that I've flown. The other thing I will mention is that if you're coming from a Dudek Comfort harness, this harness is harder to get out of when uh, you want to foot drag or land. That said, this harness scoops you up like as soon as the wing lifts some weight. This harness scoops you up off your feet and you're flying. It's, it's really easy to get into the seat, but it's harder to get out of. And I think it's the way that the, the position that the straps are sewn into the bottom seat board. And I'm flying the 16 meter drift air, in case you guys didn't know that. Oh, our windsock is still up there. All right, so just in front of me, there's like that clear dirt spot. Yeah, I'll do a flyby. See the orange streamers? So that's our takeoff location. That's our little windsock. Look at this, I'm Ridge Sword on a 16 meter. Beautiful. The harness in flight is super comfortable. No complaints from it in flight. What did I do? So I raised my seat. After I flew it twice, I raised the, where the harness attaches to the motor at the top mounts. I raised that up like one position. So basically my seat is higher. And what that did was uh, it made the motor pitch less under power. So before, when I would go from like low power to, to full power, the motor would tilt forward, you know, under throttle. And by raising my harness up uh, on the frame, 
it does that less now and I'll, it does make it a little bit more challenging on takeoff because it's like your your frame hangs a little bit lower now but uh, it's a trade-off I'm willing to make oh I put a helix prop on I took the e-prop off so here's my complaint with the the e-props the e-props make a lot of thrust in the mid-range like half throttle like cruising power and then you go full throttle from there and there's like not much else it's like the motor spins faster and it gets louder but you, you don't get much more thrust than than you know uh, half to 75 percent throttle and like the last 25 percent of your throttle just makes the motor louder it doesn't give you more thrust and I did back to back with the e-prop and the helix and I put the helix on and it, at full throttle the helix definitely pulls harder or pushes harder I should say I would say that's my preference you know taking off at 4,000 feet MSL on a 16 meter wing and also if you do put a helix prop on this um, some of you may not know this but e-props do not need a spacer but the helix props do Vito sells a spacer to to use if you put a helix prop on your paramotor and that goes for any motor not just this gravity yeah so that's it go for this flight just get some cool scenery for the chase cam kind of give you guys an update on the gravity I'm still loving the drift air guys no complaints from it at all uh, another El Paso pilot named Lee Boone he bought an 18 meter drift air he loves his drift air down the mountain speed wing style -hoo -hoo -hoo. oh there's big horn sheep no way dude Bighorn sheep. I always heard that they lived out here, but I've never seen them. There they are. Someone left a flag up here. Oh, no, that's a trash bag stuck on a stick. Yeah, buddy. You know what's up? Dropping in. Dropping in. Cool fact about this area, there's uh, evidence from fossilized sea creatures in the rock here that this whole area was once underwater. It's crazy to think about, but if you look at the terrain in the landscape, you can kind of see how water flowing would create these mountains it's crazy it, and i never get tired of looking at it ever skirt this ridge line down all the way down we'll, we'll chase that ridge line to the bottom it should be pretty sick hey if you're a speed flyer guy and you watch my channel and you don't fly paramotors yet this is why you should get a paramotor because it's like speed flying but I didn't have to hike up this mountain, you know, and uh, I can do it over and over again. I can do it 20 times in one flight. I'm getting a few bumps, lift, rotor and stuff, so I can't get too close to the terrain without risking it for the biscuit. And I ain't trying to die for the GoPro. This is sick enough though. And then the cliff drops. Woo! And then we just come on speed bar and wing it over. 
Oh, for the cliff drops. Oh, yeah. Ah. Oh, it never gets old, guys. Ah. So sick. Look, if you try to do this, you have to understand the flow. Let's say if the wind was a little bit from the southwest, you cannot do that on this side of the hill right here because the, the wind is going to come up and then it's going to be rotor over there. Alright, so I know the wind is a little bit southwest today. So that ridge line, this is, this is directly west. So this ridge line here that I did that drop down is going to get the cleanest, smoothest airflow out of the, all these hills right here. If, if you, you know, thought the wind was a little bit from the northwest and you tried to do what I just did on this more southern peak and you got on the north side of it when the wind was from the southwest, you can get a huge mountain rotor that can fold your wing up. If it doesn't collapse your wing, it's not, it's going to scare you. Let me skirt this ridge line. See, that's too much of a dip, so I got to climb up because there's, there's rotor and turbulence down there. But this line is good right here. the bar bring it over on the bar off the bar bring it over bring it over just a touch of tip steam and this terrain is so sick so beautiful Y'all ready for some drops? There's a Jeep trail up here. Dropping in. On the cliff face. Oh my God. So sick, dude. Yes. Holy crap, that was epic! Alright, here we go. Cliff face, it's almost vertical. Too bad it's not higher, but it's high enough to be entertaining. Do like a little speed bar run into a wing over. And upside down. Yes. And upside down. And upside down. Grab it. Well guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna cut the audio here and turn some tunes on. Some rock and roll, watch this sunset, and rip on these trails back home. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this footage. Peace.